What's up everybody, George T from The Wagon. This week we're gonna be installing a Jeanberg linkage onto a dual 48 IDA motor. So this is a GB453 and what determines that is the width of it that we're using here in wrinkle finish black for an OEM fan shroud. Make sure you know if you're ordering from Jeanberg, you know if you have an OEM or a Chinese aftermarket fan shroud. This kit came with our linkage arms for the tall manifolds we're running and all the hardware necessary also comes with instructions. Our first order of business was to remove the CSP cams off of the carburetors and install the Berg cams onto it. This is a pretty straightforward procedure. You remove that nut, pull the other one off, put this one on and then tighten that nut back up making sure that you're not making it too tight. It should snap back on its own. Tech tip, do not file this to fit. If you file this to fit your shaft, eventually this thing will be blown out in no time. And if you do have it blown out, you remove that nut and washer, take a punch and punch right next to the flat parts of the bolt and it'll tighten it back up to where you lose that slop here. This should move in unison with that shaft there. So we've got our old CSP linkage removed. We've got our cams put onto our carburetors on both of them. They're left and right and they are side specific. There is. You see that little shaft right there? That's what your throttle stop is gonna go off of to set your idle speed. So make sure you get that in there correctly. So our next order of business is we're gonna be taking those two top bolts off there and getting our linkage bar mounted up there. We have to cut the third hole into it and I'm gonna use a nut rivet to do that. Something you need to pay attention to is you want the back bar to be straight. So there's obviously a distance here because of the way that shroud piece is and you'll put a couple of berg washers in there to stack it out on each one of these so when we get our nut rivet in here we're going to have to have a washer in between the bar and our nut rivet to give it the same spacing all the way across to keep that bar nice and straight so why am i removing that csp csp is a great brand does some really nice products why am i taking this off in order to run that berg linkage in my humble opinion what i've run what I run on my own vehicles and what I push onto the people that have me work on their cars is the Berg linkage. Now the reason for this, if you want to know, stick around to the end of the video and we'll go over why I choose the Berg linkage over all linkages on the market. Because we're going to be working by this alternator, do yourself a favor and disconnect your battery. You can disconnect just the positive lead or just the negative lead. I always prefer to do both just to make sure we don't have any issues. When you're installing this linkage bar on it and it does not have a third hole that you're going to be making you make sure that you have this thing nice and level so right now i'm a little high on this side i'm going to straighten it up and once i'm comfortable with it and i'm actually using a degree finder to let me know when i'm straight on it when i look back like this i line up the top of the deck lid with the bar and you can see that i have more space here than there so i know that end is a little proud we got to bring it back down once I have this bar level where I like it, that's when we're gonna mark and drill our third hole. I'm really happy with what we got going on right there. I've straightened up this bar. Once again, I take a step back and you can use the top edge of your deck lid opening and you can see that it's nice and straight now. So I'm comfortable enough to where I'm gonna mark that hole right there. We're gonna remove that linkage bar we're gonna drill and put a nut rivet into the actual fan shroud, and then we'll get that thing bolted back up in place. Got that in there. I'm taking my scribe, AKA punch, and I'm gonna scribe a circle onto that fan shroud. And I know that I need to get in the center of the circle I'm making for accuracy there. So now we're gonna pull this whole bracket off and start our drilling there and get a nut rivet put onto that fan shroud. Found the center of my hole there just kind of by judging it by eye but that ring right there is the trace from when we had the bar initially in place so we're going to get this drilled out 
for the size for the M6 nut cert that we're gonna put in so all the hardware matches all the way across. So I'm just doing a two millimeter bit in there and that's gonna be my pilot. We're gonna end up using a roto cut on this. So we have a 3 8 roto cut bit here. The size of this is slightly bigger than the 3 8 but we can finish that off with a file or a step drill bit. So I got a round rat tail file because I can index in there, it's just not dropping in. I'm gonna give a little bit of a filing and this just should index right in. So the next size up, it'll slip right in on those rotocut bits, but I prefer for it to be a snug fit. I feel safer with that, so when I do my compression on it, it's not moving up and down and getting out of line with the other three. make sure, you saw how I went back and tightened that up a couple times, I'm making sure I'm getting full compression on that because that is going into a fan shroud, you have no access to the backside of it until that thing comes off. There we go. So we have all three mounting points in place now. We're gonna bring the bar back into play. So we now have our nut rivet in there and I've got that washer greased in place and that washer there greased in place. So on this one, even with the indentation in the fan shroud, you still have the backing plate plus a washer. So there's a good possibility we're gonna to need to actually put two washers on this to get the same spacing on the back of that bar. So I'm gonna end up putting two of the same exact style washers that are already on those over there onto this one here. It's gonna be a little more difficult. I'm gonna do this, put these on after the fact like once I get the bar in place with those two, then I can kind of slip this behind there and catch them with the uh, bolt as I go to put it through. First thing I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna clean up my mess from drilling and everything, vacuum out this engine compartment. that in place we can see yep one fits real easy two's got some resistance so two is the answer as they go scattering everywhere you sons of so now we're gonna get those two in there and this is where you really gotta get crafty with this I'm gonna put grease on the both of them to hold them to each other and then we're gonna bring them up underneath while I have the hardware here ready to stab it in there. Something I failed to mention in the beginning, 
like I put the berg linkage in a service mode. I'm going through that bottom hole there and I'm wrapped around this inner bar over here with a zip tie and that's keeping the pressure off of this so you're not fighting the, the springs in order to put this on there. Another thing is I only run the first spring. The second spring I take off. I take a small little vacuum cap and I go over the end of that so that doesn't continue to scratch the fan shroud. And if needed, I will use the second spring. But if you set your linkage up properly, you should only need the one spring to do your return. And it gives you a really nice light pedal. Makes the motor feel responsive when you don't have to really lay into it to get it to do something. So I am going to pull this one off of here. And I'm gonna put a vacuum cap on the end of it there. And I'm gonna take it over. And once we put it up against the fan shroud, it's gonna hold that vacuum cap in place because normally it wouldn't sit there on its own. And since we have all this set up, I can now go ahead and cut this zip tie and allow that to go back onto the fan shroud. We now have our linkage bar set. We have our return spring on there. Our throttle cable is gonna come up into it, but we're not even gonna worry about that right now. Our next order of business is going to be our linkage arms. So this is the way the linkage arms are going to go onto the vehicle. There's a reason why they have these bends on it, and I've heard people argue that it's stupid. Well, this works the same way, let's say, a shift rod would work. You don't have a straight shift rod in between two points because it, it needs to push at a different angle. So with this Berg arm, the way that it's designed is it will actually still push down even though you're pushing this way onto it. It's going to put the direction downward so that carb opens up properly. And I've seen people argue that these, these are ridiculously bent. Gene Berg was not stupid. He was a very bright man. This is a very good design. In your hardware packet that was on that uh, blister pack, there are different size hardware. This would thread onto this perfectly fine, but this is the full thickness and then they have jam nuts. Your outers on the blister pack are your jam nuts. Your inners are the ones that are gonna lock that to the cams on the carburetor. So make sure you distinguish the two. You can see right there. You can see when I put them next to each other how much thicker that one is. So this is for that shaft there, not for here. Your thin ones, once again, jam nuts, are gonna butt up against that when we go to lock them into place. The lock washer in the blister pack goes on this linkage arm when you're putting that hardware on when you put it onto the cam on the carburetor the lock washer locks into place and Jeanberg always supplies a brand new barrel nut which is wonderful so you have brand new components for all your linkage this is hands down the best linkage on the market some people find it unattractive i think it looks freaking gangster it looks industrial it looks dope that's people's opinions everybody's got one so just from experience I've installed a ton of Berg linkages. There is a possibility because there's so many manifolds on the market and I did order this for the tall manifolds and these look like they may work without any modifications. But sometimes you may need to shorten the shaft, like you may need to cut it here. Um, even on some of the other ones I ordered for the IDAs, I actually have to tap that deeper and cut them so much shorter. So potentially I'm ordering the wrong part there. So to bench set it up, the short side I leave on what's gonna be my upper bar and the long threaded side is gonna be my lower because if I need to do any cutting, I'll do it on the lower. It's easier to access. So we're gonna go ahead and thread this on there. Now with Berg linkage, they are both right-hand thread. Like other linkages, they'll have a left hand and right hand and you can turn it and it expands and it'll expand and contract the shaft. You cannot do that with this with this bend in it. So you have to turn each one individually which means you will be disconnecting from either the linkage or the carburetor in order to get the proper height set on it. So that's all the way on, and I don't wanna have this thing all the way on because then you're just locked into an adjustment. So I usually back it out one and a half rotations like that. So with this is about where it's gonna go on there and we still have room, this swivels nicely. Once we lock it in place, it will not swivel. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna thread that into the one that's on the linkage bar inside the bus and leave ourselves one and a half rotation to do any fine adjustment if needed. And if needed, we may have to shorten that shaft and I'll show you that if we have to do it. All right, we got both arms set up. We have a left and we have a right. And by that, I'm meaning this here. Like you want 
you want to have that angle. Our bar is in the middle. We come out and meet the carburetor for its downward stroke back to the bus. Bring this in here and I'm gonna start threading it into the upper heim until it stops. Okay, so it stopped there. So I'm gonna go one, two row it turns out. So I can already see there that I'm not reaching the carburetor. We're gonna go one more turn out on the top and we got a couple that we can do out here. One, two, three. And also keep in mind when we get this set, this space here, we actually want an air gap there. We don't want that always touching the fan shroud. It should be spaced away from it. And that way, when it goes to return, it's actually returning. It's pulling up on it. All right. So you saw how we got that on there. I ended up having to put this on the side. This came to me with that on the wrong side and I didn't catch that at first. I was wondering why it's such a drastic angle on this arm and now I know why. So this is a much better explanation of how a bird linkage works. With it coming down like this, it's putting a nice downward throw onto that linkage to have it do the natural sweep it wants to do. Another thing to take note of when working with Berg linkage is the fact that this is actually, everything on this end of it is American hardware. So to hold this captive here is a 3 8 wrench and to tighten this one is a 7 16 7 16 here, 7 16 here as well. 3 8 locks that one there and 7 16 will tighten that. We're gonna get these snugged up and make sure that we have an air gap at the shroud. So I got to tighten those up quite a bit. Once I put that in the proper location on the exterior of that top arm, I got to turn those things in two turns each on each of these. And I am still hitting that shroud, so we're gonna take that top arm off and give it one more rotation inward. Okay, when I say inward, we're gonna shorten it up one. So we're bringing it in one full turn. It still needs more. We're gonna take it another turn. Right there. So I'm gonna bring it in. Now I've got my air gap back over there. And we're bedded nice and deep on that top one as well. Don't bother me at all. Alright, I got that one tightened. And I got that one tightened. Another point that sometimes I have to modify is this right here. Sometimes that hits like it's doing now on the carburetor. So what I'll do at that point is I'll put some washers on this side of that hardware because right now it's hitting the stem. The actual shaft of this is coming through and touching right on the base of the carburetor right there. So I'm gonna stack two washers on this side to get it away from there. Okay, they do not come with extra hardware in the kits to do this spacing that I'm about to do right here. But because I do so many Berg linkages, I actually do have the proper washers for it. So I'm gonna start with three washers. You see I'm putting three on that bottom there and putting it in, and we're gonna see how it does. So that shaft on the other side is hitting the base of the carburetor. So we'll see once we get it tightened up, if it still hits. So once again, 3 8 on this interior, 7 16 on the nut on the back side. You see as I tighten that up, it's pulling that arm down. There, I'm hitting that little bit of gasket sticking out. I'm gonna get rid of that gasket. I'm gonna take a razor knife and just cut along that to get rid of it. Because once we get that out of the way, that linkage is gonna go smooth. Yeah, right now I'm just hitting on that piece of gasket that it's destroying right there. All right, we'll cut that out of the way and then we're gonna move on to the other side. So this one here, we got some obstacles in the way and I'm not sure exactly how in the way that's gonna be. I think we're gonna end up clearing it in the long run, but <clears throat> be aware of your surroundings. That dude right there is an issue. We're going to be proactive on this one, and obviously that's on the wrong side. We're going to move that to the exterior of there, so this has a better angle coming down to that there. And we may have to do the same thing here, potentially put a couple of the washers on the exterior of this cam to keep that stem from hitting. So 
we have both of our linkage arms made for each side and we are in a functional working order now with this linkage. As you see, I'm getting stuck up on that gasket I never cut out. So we'll get that out of there. And it is happening on the other side, so I'll do it with both. But once our arms are made, we are far from done. So the linkage part of it is all done right now. The only thing that we have left to set once we get this corrected here is we're gonna set the throttle stops. And these are very important, especially on IDA linkage. It does have its own stop with that shaft because it won't go past that point there, but you wanna actually set the stop. So it takes uh, the force off of your throttle shafts. That's the main reason for setting these stops here. We're also gonna be removing the arms from the linkage. And when we fire up the motor, we're gonna sync the carburetors without the linkage attached to it. Because you always sync your carbs first and then you're gonna put the linkage on it and you adjust accordingly to make sure that when you put your linkage back on, you're not higher or lower on your sync meter. We've got both of our areas clearance now. I basically just took a uh, gasket scraper and scraped that gasket off of there, off the edges. And they're both free flowing. And we are getting full throttle on both sides. Okay, so we've got full throttle. By the way, the carbs are empty. I already took them off the bench and I had to go through and clean the jets and whatnot. So if anybody thinks I'm filling the motor full of gas, you're wrong. I haven't fired the pump back up. So these are bone dry. I have the throttle depressed all the way now. We're gonna get a 5 16 and loosen that nut and we're gonna run this nut or this bolt upward until it touches the bottom of that throttle right there. And that's gonna basically be our throttle stop and you do it to both sides. And that makes sure you can't bend your throttle shafts. That's why Berg's the best. The nut right there is the locking nut for that bolt. So once you loosen that, then you can start to drive this one up to meet that other one. So it's 5 16 but it's also the same size as an 8mm. I have an 8mm ratchet box end that I'm going to use to make it a little faster. So I've threaded that first one, the nut right there, down all the way to where it matches the head of the bolt. I'm gonna take it back down to full throttle, and I'm going to start running that bolt up into it. So I'm, I'm not forcing this down. I'm basically bringing it down to full throttle. I've just now run that into it to where I feel the contact on there. I'm gonna take it up and I'm just gonna straighten that nut up, meaning I'm gonna bring that in, not even a quarter turn on that one. I'm gonna see if I have the ability to set it so thin Nice, got it, okay. So there we go. We're touching on that throttle stop there when it reaches full throttle. It's a really important step that a lot of people overlook when they're doing Berg linkage. So this is a Berg linkage on a set of 44 IDFs. These are actually HBMX carburetors. So they do, when you order it for this setup, they come with different cams for here. And I just want to point out, you could use this video. Everything I've done in this video would have been the same for 44s as it would be for the 48 IDs over there. The one difference is going to be these cams. So I had a buddy actually reach out to me this week. I leave the stock HPMX control on there and I cut this side of it off. So this cam can then fit off of it, on it. And then on the other side, Normally there's a flange or, or a, a peak that that hook goes onto for the spring. So once I've cut that off, now that hook goes onto my Berg cam right there. So everything in that video that I just did would have worked to put this 44 setup in. So if we were already carb synced everything, we'd basically be connecting our throttle at that point right there. And this installation would be done. Why don't I like the push-pull linkages? And why is the Berg superior to it? So Berg initially designed the linkage he made off of a Porsche 356, off of an original German design is what this linkage is based off of. And 
The reason why is because as this motor expands and contracts, it will not change anything with your carburetor sinking. They will move out and these arms will pivot and allow that expansion rate to take place and not affect it. Push-pull on the other hand. There is one push-pull on the market that I do like and it is the vintage speed. And they've corrected the issue that we have here. I have three buses on the road that have push-pull linkages on it. My brother Bill's uh, Bull Run bus, his carbon cab, and Scott Moses bus. All of those were on push-pull because they were poor shrouded type fours. And every time we go on a road trip with them, they have idling issues when their motor starts to get warm. And there's a reason for that. With the push-pull linkage, you make a very set length from left to right on the carburetors and it cannot change because the most minute change will affect your idle tremendously so as this motor heats up and it starts to expand outward because it does it grows outward this way what it does is it actually pulls in those arms so it's going to make your throttle open up even more just because now you're at a higher rate especially if they were not set when the motor was at operating temperature if you set this up when it was a little too cool, then once the motor gets to operating temperature, it's gonna affect your idle. So once again, any, any adjustment you're gonna do on carburetor is gonna be done at operating temperature. But operating temperature is one thing, and then road tripping temperature is another, because operating temperature is where you'd like to stay. Unfortunately, sometimes we're hitting big grades, we're hitting long runs where we're holding 75, 80 miles an hour, that motor's gonna get a little warmer than normal. When it gets to a, a level where this thing really goes to full expansion, these arms actually, are pulling in now and the reason for that is they've expanded nothing expanded here it cannot change that so what it does is that arm moves so it allows it to come inward increasing your idle so when these guys are getting off the freeway they're holding 1200 to 1500 rpms you know whereas we're still holding our desired 850 to 950 with a Berg linkage. That is why this linkage is superior to all others on the market. When it comes to the hex bars, there are decent hex bars. The CB, where you're using the Delorto bases, that's a good hex bar, but the majority of them are trash. They come with bad crossbars, bad arms, cheap himes, all that other junk, because most of it's just Chinese garbage. CB does make the best hex bar linkage out there. But as far as all the other linkages on the market, there's none better than Berg. So that's it, we got that Berg linkage installed. These carbs are not synced yet, but we got that to look forward to next week. So we're gonna do a full video on how to sync the carburetors once you've installed a new linkage on it. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the support. Thanks to all the 1400 plus subscribers I have now. You guys all rock. And we're gonna keep putting out air-cooled VW content for you every week. Don't forget about one crazy weekend coming up, October 3rd through the 5th, 2024, at the o Orleans Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. We got all kinds of fun events planned and we're trying to do even more. I know here at the wagon, we're gonna be giving away pulled pork sliders and brats done by my friend at IBB Backyard Barbecue. So we're gonna have a good time here during the poker run. So make sure you're there. Get your car running, get everything in order and come actually enjoy your car for a weekend. So come on down and don't forget, Let's Talk Dubs and the Wagon are bringing you one crazy weekend in Las Vegas, Nevada.